Byron Scott joins us on the phone. Byron, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, good. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Uh, so the big news, obviously, Friday, LeBron James headed to Cleveland. Four years too late, obviously, right, Byron? How many? Four years too late. Going back to Three, Cleveland. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's when you took the job four years ago, right, in Cleveland? Four years ago, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what were your thoughts when you heard that he was going back to the Cavs? I was a little surprised, uh, and, I, and I think a lot of people were, um, you know, but I wasn't shocked. Uh, you know, that's his home. Uh, I think he hinted a couple of times during his uh, stint with Miami that uh, he would hope the fans would welcome me back if he decided to come back. Uh, I know we played him one game uh, when he did say something like that uh, his second year in Miami. So I think all along it was something that was in the back of his mind. And obviously, uh, he, you know, him and Dan uh, Gilbert kind of squashed the, uh, the things that were said when he left. And he felt, you know, really comfortable as far as coming back home. And I think his family uh, probably uh, also talked to him about coming back home. And it's just a decision that he made that I think is – it's the best for him and his family in the long run. That's something that he wants to do. So all you got to do right now is just tell him, you know, good luck and, uh, you know, wish him all the best. Byron, we were just talking about Jeremy Lin uh, a few moments ago, reported that the Lakers will be acquiring Jeremy Lin in the trade. What, what are your thoughts on him as a player, 25 years old, uh, and playing with the Houston Rockets? Of course, Lin Sanity, we had mentioned back in February of 2012. I like Jeremy. I really do. I think he's a kid that uh, he plays the right way. He plays extremely hard. Uh, he seems to always be in attack mode offensively. He pushes the ball up the, up the floor as well as anybody in the league. Uh, defensively, the thing that I thought was going to be his biggest downfall uh, was something that I thought he really competed at, you know, in the times that I coached against him. So uh, I'm a Jeremy Lin fan. I think it was a great move by the Lakers. Uh, you get him on a you know two-year deal, essentially really a one-year deal, and he comes off the cap next year. Uh, and he's, I think, looking to kind of reestablish himself uh, because of the injuries that he had last year, and Houston kind of lost his way and his job there. Uh, and I think he's going to come there with a little chip on his shoulder, so I thought it was a good move. Well, Byron, of course, we're now months past when Kobe Bryant signed his extension. He could have been a free agent this summer. That was something now that the Lakers didn't have to worry about. But we heard him talk just the other day in Santa Barbara, and he says he's feeling fully healthy right now. I'm just wondering what you expect from him as we go into next season now, coming off, of course, two injuries, the knee being not as major as the Achilles two seasons ago. Well, you know what, Mike, I, you know, the one thing I know about Kobe is he's the most driven player in this league. and He's the most driven player that's been in this league in a long time since, you know, a couple of guys I played with, and one is, you know, 42 and one is 32, and then this other guy in Chicago named Michael Jordan. So he, uh, if anybody can come back from those type of injuries, it's Kobe Bryant. And I really uh, suspect him to come back fully healthy and ready to go and being able to play um, the type of ball that he's capable of playing. I, I mean, even... You know, a Kobe Bryant that's this, this not fully healthy is going to average 27 points in this league. And I think his determination and his will uh, to come back this year and kind of show a lot of people that he's not done is the thing that drives him the most. So I, I'm looking forward to watching him play this year, and I think he's going to come back with a vengeance. Byron, uh, Dave McBenjamin here. There's 30 teams in the league. Only one of them have a coaching vacancy. We know if you've spoken several times to Lakers management over the course of, of the process of them trying to figure out who they're going to bring in to fill that position. Has there been any update there? I know the Lakers were trying to stay flexible, trying to keep it open in, uh, as the free agency process played out, but, but where does the, the job opening stand in your eyes right now? It's, it's still open. I mean, obviously, um, you know, I, I know in my dealings and talking with Mitch and, and Jim, they wanted to get the roster together uh, and then focus on the coaching. So uh, myself and whoever else is the other candidates, I think that's what we're all waiting for. And we're kind of looking at what's going on today and yesterday and probably this Saturday and Sunday as well uh, to see if that's all done. And then, you know, to see next week what they're going to do with the coaching vacancy. So um, it's just one of those things. It's just a wait and see game right now. But I, like I said, I like some of the moves that they made today. Uh, I think it's going to help the team and strengthen the team. And obviously it still puts them in a good, flexible position for next year. Byron, we had a lot of fun covering of Swaggy fun. P this past season. You know what it's like <laughs> to thrive in the city of Los Angeles. What is it about Nick Young that made these Laker fans fall in love with him? And, and, and it's a great day that he's coming back, obviously, for the next four years. It, it really is. I mean, he got a very infectious personality. And, and um, you know, he's great on the court. He's great in the locker room. Uh, you know, he, he's great to, uh, 
emulate in the in the studio. You know, he's one of those guys that you just really enjoy being around. So I, I think it was great that you know that uh, Mitch and Jim decided to bring him back, and uh, we all know that that's you know that's the place that Nick wanted to be. He wants to be here in Los Angeles. He wants to play in that purple and gold. Uh, and again, now it gives you you know some firepower coming off that bench. You know, with a guy that we know can definitely fill it up. And what I loved about watching him last year is that on the defensive end, you could see for the first time, at least in my mind, in his career, that he was putting forth that effort. And I think that showed maturity. And I think he'll even get better at that end of the floor uh, this coming year as well. Jordan Hill reported two years for $18 million. The second year is a team option. This is a guy that you talked a lot about when you were sitting right next to me. You, you always said it's a guy that right. you would love to have on the team, and he can fit anywhere. What is it about Jordan Hill that you like so much? Well, the one thing I love about him is that you don't have to run plays for Jordan. I mean, Jordan's one of those guys that's going to go and get off the glass. He's going to do his job. He's going to do the things that he knows that can make him successful. Uh, he's one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. He runs the floor. He's still very athletic. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is you can put him in there and you don't necessarily have to worry about him uh, crying or begging or, or asking for, you know, plays to be called for him because he can be a double-double guy just on sheer hustle and, and tenacity. And that's what I really like about Jordan is that, you know, when I saw him all this year is that he just did his job every single night. You know, he, he commanded respect because of the fact that he hit the boards every single time. Uh, on both ends of the floor, and uh, you know those type of players are hard to find. You know, especially in today's uh, today's uh, game. You know, everybody wants the ball. You know, but he's the guy that I thought uh, every night he went out there and did his job, and that was to hit the hit the glass, play defense, uh, and, and and run the floor. And I thought he did that extremely well.